I think anybody that, that goes into the performing arts has to deal with that issue of rejection. It's, it just is always there, you know, so I just had a lesson before I came in today, uh, an older student who went through undergraduate school here and he's 32 and he's really very good. He's a, a light tenor and he looks good and he sounds good and he's a wonderful musician and it's, it's music when he sings. and. He said, well, you know, I've just gotten around to thinking that I really am going to do this. He said, you know, for every, every two jobs you get, you get ten rejections. And that's really true. I mean, it, and it begins right at that very first audition situation. I think you have to, um, you know, I'm, I've been interested always in watching that um, Inside the Actors Studio series of interviews because despite the, the structure of the interview, which is pretty rigid sometimes, uh, generally there are things that are said that are, that are highly interesting for anybody who's going to go on the stage in any capacity. And uh, I think it might have been Alec Baldwin who said, you know, an audition is an opportunity to perform. It's, it's just another chance to perform. And, you know, when you get right down to it, there's, it's, it's all failure, really. You know, you could view it that way, that every time you sing, something's going to be wrong. Every time you get up on stage, something won't go quite right. That beautiful plan of 100% that you were going to get, maybe you, you're lucky if you get 60% of what you set out to do. So I think that element in, in preparing somebody for an audition needs to happen early on that there is this sense of play that informs the instructional process and the process of practice. And then that, that spirit of, of experimentation and play goes also into the, to the performance and to the audition. Of course, you, don't, you, you leave as little to chance as possible. You know, you, you, you know your piece you know, thoroughly. You know where, where all of the words go, how they're pronounced, where all of the rests are, you know, the harmonics under you, you, you've played it, you've done it with a good pianist and with a lousy one, you know, that I could name everything that you could possibly do. And you pick pieces that suit you to the ground. You know, the repertoire is so vast, there's utterly no reason to go in and audition with a piece that you don't like. Uh, that because choose another piece, you know, but you, you should have pieces that, um, that speak to your strengths rather than to your weaknesses. I mean, there are a lot of people that get up and sing pieces because they think they should, whereas if they had shown what they could do rather than what they can't do, they'd get the job. And there are a lot of ways of doing that, and that takes, it takes guidance. I mean, nobody, I think, the really super students, you know, the really superb ones that have career written all over them, kind of know that from the start. They know what suits them, and they know where they're comfortable, and they won't put themselves in a situation where they're uncomfortable. But most of us, and I was one of those, I had, it took me a while to figure out what suited me and what didn't, and uh, how, to, how to choose things that would show a lot of palette, you know, not palette as in it, that palette, but painterly palette that I could show lots of different colors and lots of different things that I could do. And I ended up, you know, then starting to, to win contests and auditions and was able to begin working. You can tell sometimes by how they comport themselves what it's going to be. Other times it's a surprise. The, the farther they are in, in lessons and in trade, the more you can tell from just how they walk on the stage. Right at the beginning, maybe not so much.